Okay, our first question. He's going to go drink all the liquor. All of these are anonymous. I didn't have anybody saying their names. I need some advice to come out to my parents. I sort of told my mom that I'm a lesbian, but she is confused because I don't have a partner. You don't, you don't need a partner to know what, to know what your sexuality is. Something. It's not always, I mean, it's not always an easy, easy thing to, like, explain to somebody, especially, like, it's like, my parents are significantly older. And so sometimes explaining things like being genderqueer, which makes absolutely no sense to them because they've never been exposed to it, have no idea what that means. And no matter how much you explain it to them, they may not get it. It's, right. it's like one of those things, like, if your parents really have never been exposed to something like that before, they really may not get it. Um, and even my mom did some research, I guess, and she still just, it wasn't, it was like something she couldn't comprehend, like she just didn't understand. Like means the whole binary, like the binary gender thing that you have a hard time understanding sometimes. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to have a part. You don't have to have a partner. You just have to know what you like. Yeah, it's really all all that matters. You know what you like. like and this one. a lot of parents, it just yeah. it just kind of takes okay. them a second. Okay. Oh, there's a cat on the fort. No, you just moved the you umbrella. You just moved the umbrella. They're, okay. They're stuck in the back. I thought Fred. Ah! <laughs> the tape came undone. The tape came undone. Go fix it. <laughs> Feels like the weight <laughs> of the world. Oh, here comes Frankie. Frankie, come here, booby. She's like, what the hell? <laughs> come here. I was gone for like an hour and come back to this shit. <laughs> Bitch, I'm walking. <laughs> Bitch, I'm walking. Come here. Come here, sweetie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Come here. Oh, you scared her. I'm sorry. Do you believe in the possibility of a zombie apocalypse? No. Not really. Me either. I don't think that that's a possibility no. of just the undead coming back to life, or the dead people coming back to it's life. Just the con and being it's just the concept of zombies, like scientifically, makes no sense. Right. Like, how can a non-living thing be moving? Like, it, it, it scientifically and biological, biologically speaking, you can't have what our idea of zombies is. Right. We could like the closest you would get is like something of like twenty-eight days later. Where there's a virus and they're exposed to it, or like I am Legend. Yeah, but like, like people being dead and then coming back to life is like not a thing. It's not a thing that can happen <laughs> <No>. biologically. <laughs> speaking, unless it doesn't stop me from wanting it to happen. Sometimes. Why? You just want all the people. I just you don't want like, like a temporary thing, like in Shaun of the Dead, where nope. it all happened in one day. No. Nope. And then after that, everything. I'd cool. rather not have to fight for my life. So. Would you rather have Twizzlers or Red Vines? Red Vines! I'm a Twizzlers. Neither. I think they both taste like plastic. I mean, I'd rather have like something different, but if I had to choose between the two, definitely like Twizzlers. Vines. I don't um, like licorice. I, 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 I think they both taste like plastic, so I would, I would just say no for both well, of them. Well, yeah. I wouldn't eat either of them anymore, but fine. Okay. Oh, here's one that is on the trans topic. I live in Sydney, Australia. A friend of mine has come out as an FTM transsexual. Nice. Just the other day, I just found out totally. I just need some help as to how to adjust because I have Asperger's and this is a bit of a shock to the system. If I can help, if I can help them in the best way I can. So I guess they just want to know how to kind of internalize that and help them in any way they can. They don't seem like they have had any very much education. Well, it's, a, it's an adjustment adjustment issue. Like, and people with Asperger's have issues with change, right? Which is something I deal with on an everyday basis since I do have Asperger's. Right. Um. The biggest thing is to probably like I think the best thing would be to educate yourself, look up stuff about it, learn things, um, and just accept them for who they want to be. Like I don't. Don't, if you misgender them, apologize. If you, it's just, it's all this, all this stuff is just it's easy. It's hard to change yourself, but it, it, you just have to keep in mind that it's, 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 it's who they are. It's not, it has nothing to do with, um, what they want to be. It's, it's who they are. So, you, you can either choose to accept it or not. But I can't say that I would blame them if they didn't want to keep you in their life if you didn't accept it. Right. Okay. Good job. Next question. 
So I'm drinking alone, listening to the Next to Normal, the musical, and feeling like shit. I need to get back to the dating road. It's been a year and a half since I last jumped out of that ship. What do you suggest? The last girl I dated, I still think of her a lot, and I've been after a straight girl with a boyfriend one, at one year and two months. I'm in the business of misery. What do I do? Fucking stop. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm really terrible at mine. It's like, stop. Stop. I can't give don't it. do the thing. I can't give anybody dating advice. Yeah. I haven't been with anybody in two years, and it's difficult dating while trans as it is. Yeah. Like, it's, it's one of those things either you can just deal with being single. Like, just accept, Let it go. accept that you're single, and especially if you accept that you're single, because no matter what you do, the likelihood is that you're more likely to find something when you're not fucking. Right. That because if you're, con it's continually on your brain, then you're always looking and you're always missing the ones that could be. And on the subject of the straight girl with the boyfriend, A, she's straight. B, she has a boyfriend. You should probably not be going after Let people go. that are Let in a relationship. <laughs> and if she's adamantly straight, then, you know, it's probably not going to happen. So... Um, and if she's been with the same guy for like a year, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, she seems pretty committed in the relationship yeah. that she's in. And if she's your friend, I wouldn't j sacrifice your friendship for being with her. I would support her with her boyfriend as best you can, not try to sabotage it. And you know, friendships can be intimate. You can have an intimate friendship with someone without taking it to the next level. You can really get confused with those feelings sometimes, and I understand that. Um, but you just have to kind of separate it in your mind. Yeah, my girlfriend over here. Just kidding. <laughs> She's our, all our girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> I'm the apartment girlfriend. You just, like, switch rooms every night. <laughs> yeah, I bounce around. <laughs> the apartment girlfriend. That's it. Uh, okay. I just recently came out, and I've been on a few dates, but it hasn't been magic, and it's been more awkward than magic. So I hear this typical U-Haul thing, is on the second date. I know it's an over-exaggeration, but still. Then I wonder, how is the typical lesbian magical first date? Could someone let me know what's supposed to go down? Where would you go? Give us some details on how to make it magic so that potentially you'd end up together and there could be some U-Hauling involved. It's such a myth. It's all, like, that whole <laughs> thing is a myth. It's a myth. I don't know how to lesbian. I don't know how to lesbian. <laughs> like, no matter what, like, your first date with somebody is probably going to be awkward. No matter what you do, Most no likely. matter what you try to make it magic. And basically, it's going to be magical if the person likes you back. And I mean, okay unless, with you're, that. unless you're a person with, like, crazy charisma and confidence, then your first date is probably always going to be awkward. And the second date thing with the U-Haul... That doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Maybe... I mean, I have been in a situation where I've moved in with a girl after six months. Where, me too. <laughs> where I, I get the uh, magical second date and she stops talking to me. <laughs> like, that's my life. But, like, generally it's not a good idea to move in with someone so quickly. You need to give it time because you need to get to know them and, and then... Then it, once you get to know them outside of living with them, then try living with them, but then you really get to know them. And it's going to be hard, too, so... Yeah, it's, like, the hardest thing. Yeah. There's nothing super magical about moving in with someone. <sighs> there isn't anything magical about living with somebody, because all, all of a sudden... Living, At least not the living, first year. Living with somebody can really make or break a relationship, right. too. It really depends on your relationship with that person. Frankie, stop that! Um, but as far as some details on how to make it magic so that it potentially could end up together and there could be U-Hauling, uh... Depends on the money account. Well, that, and, like, it depends on the person that you're with. Like, some people can have a really good time without any money, and some people would like some magical first dates instead, you know? I mean... Also, my, it depends on your compatibility. My first date is usually coffee. Mine too, because then you can cut it short or you can make it last longer. And then usually on a second date, because I don't ever have any money, is something kind of more adventurous. Like a picnic in the park or something. Or a bike ride. Or a or hike. Or hike something. Do something that's relevant to both of your interests. Right. Go see a movie. If she, if she is someone who likes to, or hates the outdoors or something, then don't suggest going hiking. Don't be <laughs> with her at all. She's no fun. Now. <laughs> uh, okay. Don't listen to me. Next question. What would you say to your 7th grade self? <laughs> I would probably tell them not to let the, get the bullies get to them. Yeah. They're just stupid people. And 
at this point, this is your worst time in life, right? That Seventh minute. grade is literally the worst time of your life. It's the worst time of my life, but that's just because it was like my whole life being made fun of and not having come confirm confirmation of my sexuality or gender and people could see that I felt awkward about my life and people just made fun of me. I just didn't know who I was at that point. I was trying to be everyone else, so I didn't have any fun. I was also extremely overweight, so I got made fun of for that. That too. Yeah, too. I was very chubby. I was just that one kid that everybody picked on. So I guess I would tell myself to stop focusing on what everybody else think, thought, and no matter what, be who I was and be sincere, and that it would just get better, you know? So. Okay. I want a girlfriend. I live in Perth. I am 15, turning 16 this year. How do I get a girlfriend? What's with all these young Australians? I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. What was it? Uh... Uh, I'm 15, turning 16 this year. How do I get the, a girlfriend? I would just not. Don't try. go looking for. Yeah, don't go don't looking go for looking a girlfriend. For Especially. Uh, I know you want one, age. and I know that you want that experience, but it's not necessarily going to be the best experience you have at 15. And like generally, things happen organically. And there's nothing wrong with waiting Organic. to date somebody. Organic chemistry. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with waiting. Okay. Um, I want to get a cat, but I'm nervous because I will be taking care of it on my own. Well, it really depends on how much money and time you have to spend on said cat. Because there's the, the, um, initial cost of actually adopting the cat and buying everything that it needs in your home. And then there's the ongoing cost of when you usually first get a cat, especially a rescue cat, there's going to be a lot of medical bills involved because they're usually sick. And then you have to get them spayed or neutered. Right. Yeah. And then you have to make sure that you have a steady income so that you can feed them. And sometimes owning an animal means feeding them before you feed yourself. It also depends on whether you want a cat or a kitten. Right. If you want to adopt a cat, which I personally always suggest is better probably because they are the ones who actually need homes more often than kittens. There's a lot more kittens, but the cats are more likely to... Die in the shelter. Die in the shelter. Yeah. So... Cats and cats, and when you get them, should have everything. They should have all their shocks. They shouldn't be ill. They shouldn't be anything. They should be spayed and neutered. They should be spayed and neutered. They're, I mean, basically all you do is need to get all the accoutrements and keep up with their, their health. Mm -hmm. And then you're good. You, you just have to be ready to make that commitment. No you money, have, no time. Basically, yeah. you have to decide right. if you want to dedicate the rest of this animal's life to your life. And you know, cats can live up to 20 years, so. I mean, that's a rarity, but it does happen. Um, and, you know, if if you are someone who's never in your house, then that's not a good fit for a cat because they need lots of attention and love just like you do. And, you know, if they're just gonna be sitting around the apartment, then, you know, somebody else could have that cat instead, you know? <laughs> that can be applied to <laughs> that could also be applied to relationships. Next question. <laughs> All right. There's a girl in my class who obviously hates me, but I've never even said anything bad about her and never even really talked to her in general. What do I do? Fuck that bitch. <laughs> Basically, I, I would say there are always going to be people who like dislike you for, for absolutely no reason. No reason, and you should just not care. Exactly. If you know. Your whole life is going to be about people liking you and not liking you for absolutely no reason that you have any control over. A lot of things in life you're not going to have control over. And if you don't have control over them, stop trying to have control over them, you know? Just accept them. It's Just whole... accept it and it's like, it's water under the bridge at that point. Life is a lot easier when you just accept things. Go with sometimes. the flow. Go with the flow. But yeah, that's all the questions I have. Um, no so more questions from Australia? Nope, no more questions from Australia. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I, I only had 11 saved up, so. Um, if you would like to ask a question or get some advice, you can hit up my Tumblr, which is in my links on my page, and you can also ask me anonymously on my Spring Forum account, which is BethClayton31. Um, so yeah. Alright, bye guys. Bye.